the look we were going for, I wanted a very strong block colour in the blue, and, and everything is, is pretty much blue. The background is blue, the umbrellas are blue, and we went for a very opposing colour, almost like a magenta coloured dress. But makeup-wise and skin-wise, I wanted to keep the paler tones to keep the separation. So the skin tones were, we were aiming towards a little bit more towards like a porcelain skin, lighter in colour, but not too much, so just to offset the balance a little bit. The umbrellas were built around our model with an opening in the middle for her to stand in, and they were quite sort of flat planed towards the camera. We used a blue colorama as a background, and we lit that with a 60 degree um, open optic on one of the Ari orbiters. A key light, we used the Fresnel, um, which obviously we can adjust from a spot to a flood, and we just adjusted that so that it gave us a bit of a vignette around our set, so we didn't floodlight it. We just wanted that, the focus almost to be on our model and, and that hot spot and the uh, exposure to fall off around the edges. And to fill in the shadow areas, we've got the Octa 4, which is behind me, what we call on axis, and that is very, very low powered. We used a grid in front of that one, uh, just to really lift the shadows and complement the shadow to mid-tone ranges to balance the shot. And then we've used another orbiter behind the model, behind set, just kicking in with um, some barn doors and another open optic on there. It's a bit of a rim light, just to give a bit of separation. A lot of models are used to using strobe, and they're used to the flash freezing their motion. So of course, with continuous light, we have to just slow down a little bit and have your series of posing and moods. But when they hit that pose, they've just got to hold it so you can just capture the image. Second set, we've had a complete costume change. We've gone for a beautiful beige dress in this. Some beautiful, very small Chinese fan accessories, which we use as hair pieces. On the, the key light, we're using the optical projector uh, on the orbiter, and we're dropping in uh, some gobo cutouts into this. And the one that we've got is, is like a, a, a round fan bladed pattern with a big center spot in the middle. So we've played with that today, and the good thing is with the orbiter and this, this projection unit is that you can focus the gobo. So you can have that effect to be a sharp edged effect, or you can have it a very soft edge diffused effect. So we've played with that, and we can change that on the control panel. So really simple to use, and you can see the percentage changing, and that's just a practical way of doing it. But again, so easy, the light can stay where it is. It's just easy to control. Yes, yeah, beautiful. We've only used part of the gobo, not the whole shape of it. So we've kind of shifted it over a bit so we're getting the fans to come out to the right, from the center to the right hand side. And then the model is working in between the lights so we can get the key light to hit our eyes and things. For the next look, the idea of this, we're still sticking with the oriental flow. So here we've gone for more like a traditional Chinese dress, silk dress with the Chinese patterns on, and some beautiful jewelry in there for accessories to help pull the shot off. We've used the same gobo as we used previously with the, the round circle fan shape. The fun side of that then came with the model and her posing and direction, because she's had to feel the light coming from this projector where she's got to kind of land her face in the gobo patterns. And that can become quite playful and challenging as well. But all in all, we did amazing with that today and the results are just beautiful, yeah. And for the final look of today, we've taken the gobo out of the optical projector and we're using the shutter blades in them. They have four shutter blades, which you can just move wherever you want and create squares, triangles, you know, letterbox slits, whichever you want. And you can rotate all these to create shapes and effects. And I just wanted this flash to come across the model's face, across the body. So the interesting part here, and this is where you can get creative for the orbiters and the control in them. We wanted the image to look a little bit cooler in effect. So the good thing is with the orbiters, we can change the temperature of Kelvin and we ramped the background lights up to 12,000 degrees Kelvin. Our fill light around 9,000 and our key light we kept to just over about 7,000 degrees, but my camera 5,600 degrees. 
the color temperature of every single light to do a different thing for creative effect, which is very difficult to do with strobe or flash because you would need gels and filters to achieve all of that. And the nice thing is we can just dial that in with a control panel on every single light without moving them, without changing their placement. So they stay in place, all nice and easy. And the result from that, it was just stunning. Yeah, beautiful, one of my favorites, I think.